All right, everybody. Thank you for the introduction. That's very flattering. I'm just flattering, and I'm just hope that I can live to that expectation. Um, maybe keep it like temper a little bit lower. Just pretend I'm the worst speaker ever. Um, maybe I'll over deliver. Hopefully. <laughs> So um, welcome everybody to this uh, short presentation and this is my name is Stephen Ko and I'm here to show you how you can program your mind to be more successful in everything that you do. Hopefully we'll get there. Okay, so I'm going to show you a picture of me. So I'm just showing this picture Stephen. Yep. Um, I just need your permission I to record this session. Yep, of course, record. Up. Just don't right? submit it as evidence in court. <laughs> yeah, good. I deny. As well as, <laughs> fantastic. As well as if you have any question at all, feel free to just pop it in the chat and I will read it out to Stephen. Just thought I'll, you know, Perfect. Okay, so this, in progress. this is me when I was a lot younger. And I couldn't speak English when I first came to Australia. And as the only Asian kid in my school, bullying and racism, unfortunately, was quite a regular occurrence. And kids will call me names. Hey, Ching Chung Chang, get over here. Uh, what's that lunch? It stinks. They call me names, comment how hard I look, what I ate for lunch. And their opinion had a big impact on how I feel about myself, that I'm different and I don't belong here. And as I was growing up, I was shy away from spotlight at all costs. Like I, I hated public speaking, presentations, and any occasion where people will actually look at me. And the thing is, I would not be doing what I'm doing now, today, right now, if it wasn't for what I about to share with you today. So I hope you get something out of this. So as you know, my name is Stephen Coleman, Head Coach at Executive Warrior Academy. And today, we're gonna to cover quite a few things. There's four topic about mindset. Why your mindset enables, but also constrain you. We're gonna talk about what is a mindset, how to program your mindset to help you rather than hinder you, and lastly, some of the common pitfalls that you experience when you come to mindset change and how you can actually overcome it. Who is this for? Anyone who's interested in achieving something meaningful in their life, who aspires to be a change maker and understand that mindset is important, has an important role in their journey to success. Now, I'm gonna play an audio and I'm just hoping that you can hear this. By the way, that's one thing I forgot to test, this audio. As I play it, I'd like to get your feedback on who do you think this person is. So I'm going to play it, and please let me know if you can hear this. Can you hear there? Volume is a little low, but yeah. Okay, let me turn the volume up a little bit. I'm going to play again. Take a guess who this person is. I was remember right here on the lawn telling Lisa my home and across the street that I was a doctor. And she said, so does that mean your real parents didn't want you? Ooh, lightning bolts. I remember running into the house. I think it's was crying. Asking my parents. And they sat me down. They said, no, you don't understand. They said, we specifically picked you first. They said, from then on. I realized that I was not just abandoned. I was chosen. I was special. Okay, how did you go? Who who do you think this person is? We have Lee who suggested Tony Robbins. I couldn't actually guess. I would tell you. Any other guesses? Bruce Lee. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you who this is. You know who he is? Hopefully you've seen the face. Steve Jobs. So Steve Jobs is the person that was being interviewed. And if you didn't know, he was actually adopted. And that's the interview about his adoption and what happened to it. 
So did you hear there was actually two perspective of what happened to him? So on the one hand, he was abandoned. He was unwanted. That, that's one perspective. The other perspective is he was chosen and he was special. So they're the two perspectives that he had about what happened, about his adoption. Now, if we take what the implication of this, I think you'll agree with me. If we think that I was abandoned and wanted, something is wrong with me, it's my fault, it's easy to kind of develop that type of mentality. Whereas if you're thinking that, that I was chosen or special, I am loved and I'm secure. So... These are two dramatically different mindsets about what happened. Now, let's take this forward, and this is where I'll get your input on what happens when these mindsets encounter a setback or a particular challenge. So, we have a challenge. Life is full of setbacks. If you don't have setback in your life, I'd love to love know what, where you live and which, which planet you live on, because i love to be there. Whether it's beaten by a competitor, overlooked by promote for promotion, or failing in business. And believe me, Steve Jobs had his fair share of failures. He's not like all supreme when it comes to achievement. Or well, he has failed quite several times. What would be a normal reaction if we go with the left mindset versus the right? So in the bottom, I'm just going to make me disappear if I can. So in the bottom is that we have some reactions to setbacks. So let's go through some of these. Let me see if I can show that to you. Okay, so... Do, do, do. Yeah, so I'm going to drag this and so that you can see this. Okay, so if I zoom in on this... So I want to learn from those who've beaten me. Which side do you think this is a re reaction? Which mindset will drive more of this reaction? Would you say left or right? Right. Right? I was chosen as special? Yep. Anger? Left. Left. Excited to try again? Right. Right, fairly straightforward. Give up with set up back. Left. 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 This is unfair. Left. Left. We're doing well. How can I improve? Right. Right. Frustration. Left. Left. Okay, I'm a victim. Left. 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 And last one, I'm going to show, prove them wrong. Right. You want to prove them wrong, right? Or left? Uh, probably in between. <laughs> <laughs> in between. Right. Okay. I'll put just on the edge. Okay. It's kind of questionable whether it's left or right. Okay. So let's go back. So let me let me highlight this now. So we can see, depending on depending on your mindset, it has an influence on your reaction to a particular event, right? How you like to think about the mindset that you're carrying has an influence on how you're gonna react. So what about the future? So it impacts today. What about tomorrow? Does your mindset have an impact on your future? So tell me which mindset is more likely to lead to a life well lived, right or left? Feel free just to unmute yourself. Right. right. Yeah. How about greater happiness? Right. Yeah. How about the last one? Make more money. Which one do you think will make more money? 
seem the right time. Right. Right. Interesting. Money is not a bad thing. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Actually, it's it's a very that, that depend on how you get there, though, Steve. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I tell you, uh, what happened to my friend? A friend of mine, a good friend of mine, he was dumped at the age of sixteen by his girlfriend because he came from a poor background, so he couldn't afford to take his girlfriend out, and he had to work all the time. And as his first love, he was devastated. He made a call that he wants to make money. He wanted to become a millionaire to prove her wrong. So he did. He worked his ass off. He worked 16 hours a day, working day in and day out on his business. One day, he's sitting from his computer in his bedroom. He looked at his bank balance. And he realized something. He's done it. He's going to be a millionaire. Upon that realization, he sat on the floor of his room and just cried. He lived without a life for six years to achieve a goal, and he doesn't even know why. He didn't even know where his girlfriend is at the time. Like, she's gone. She's gone with someone else, right? So he's lost contact with her. So he's just been spending six years pursuing something and he didn't even know why. It was just to prove someone wrong. So that desire of being, that mindset of being abandoned can still be a powerful motivation. It means, it, does, it doesn't mean you're not motivated, you're not driven. It's just that you're driven probably by someone else's agenda, by something that happened to you rather than you really living who you wanted to be. So if it's just about making money, it doesn't matter. Your mindset doesn't matter. But what we can learn from this is that your mindset doesn't just impact a single event. It has an impact on your future. And that's, that's why it's, it's so important for us to understand the importance of mindset. Let's explore what that actually means to you. So, do you want your video on? Yes. Do you, are you able to see? Oh, yeah, you can't see me, can you? Can you see me? Yeah, cool. Hold it. All right. So mindset is a noun. We know that. It's a little bit like a wooden spike. And the role it plays is, did you know that once upon a time when there's trained circus elephant, and they used to tie the elephant down with that little peg with a rope tied around its leg. Now, if you imagine an elephant is a 4,000 kilogram animal, it has more than enough power to pull that, pull that peg off the ground and run off. But why doesn't it? Why doesn't the elephant pull that peg and just run off and you know, do, do whatever elephants wants to do? The way they train the elephant is when the elephant's young, really small babies, they pull the peg into the ground with a rope. What does the baby elephant do? They struggle, they're trying to run free, but baby elephant isn't strong enough. So they get all their legs hurt, bloodied with a rope, and they learn very quickly that that's not what you do. And the thing is, they stop trying, and they continue to stop trying. And years later, even though they're fully grown, they could very much pull that peg out, but they basically didn't. So their mindset, they're constrained by little peg. And that is the mindset that they grew up with, that they've taken for granted. So, and that's the definition of what a mindset is. It's the identity, the assumptions, the biases, the habits, the values, the belief system that you carry that controls what you see, what you hear, what you think and do and feel. And usually it's unconsciously. We just react. Right? We just, it's, a, it, it's like this peg. We grew up with it. We just become unconscious and we just assume that's the way it is. That is the reality of our life. And for many of us, our mindset is that little peg that you see. So it, inf it, has a inf it influences your reaction to set back to failures. But more importantly, the decisions you make, the reactions, the choices, your earning potential, your relationship, and in fact, it influences everything. I come to this realization when my mentor shared something 
that changed what I thought of myself since I was childhood. Now, my mentor is a retired C-level executive on the board of several prestigious New York architectural firms. And I was shocked that he, when he told me that he actually admired me. He said how much he admired my skills, my discipline, my mental toughness in martial arts, and how much he wished he had the same set of skills. His comment shocked me as an outcast whose differences made him easy picking for schoolyard name calling. But in hindsight, his comment for me became a catalyst of uh, like a growing sense of confidence. I started to put myself out there more, joining like even things like drama, trying public speaking. I've even attempted competitive debating and I tell you, I sucked at it. I wish I can dig a hole and bury myself in it in, um, after one particular competition. <laughs> now, what caused my shift in confidence didn't occur to me until years later when I come across a classic book by Napoleon Hill, known as Think and Grow Rich. Has anyone read that book? Maybe just unmute yourself, no? Yeah, Reg uh, Regine has read that book. Yeah. yeah. It's a really, really good book. And the book is all about how our thought can manufacture reality. As you thinketh, you become. But what it made me realize is my renewed confidence was only triggered by a single thought. The difference, how my difference is not actually a liability or for shame, but an opportunity to shine. Now, everything I did was different because of that single mindset shift on how I thought of myself. And from that point onwards, I was hooked on how thought patterns affect our life and our success. So I went on a journey. I spent 10 years investing over $100,000. I, I learned, I went from New York to Atlanta, LA, Thailand, Singapore, and within Australia. I, I went and explored how your mind influences your health, your productivity, your personal effectiveness. And today my mindset changed so much. It allowed me to do things I never thought it was possible for a shy Asian boy who spoke no English. Like presenting in front of thousands of people for three days in a row. Or training executives from Boston to Singapore to UK. And what I'm about to share with you is what I learned in over a decade. And let's start off with a very key important mindset concept. I think that will really help you take that same journey. So first, your identity is not set in concrete. Remember Steve Jobs. He had two identity or two belief systems or who he is. And is he wanted, loved, or was he abandoned? Was he special or was he a failure? No good. So that's why he did, his parents didn't want him. And these identity are part of the same person. So Steve Jobs, it's like two parts of the same coin. It's all part of the same. They're all a form of reality. It's just which side you decide to look at. His reaction to what's happening around him at any time, time will depend on the mindset he chooses to adopt at that particular moment in time. Which leads up to a simple truth, which is, when you can adopt the mindset to perform at all the right moment, at any moment, it's, it's, it's really challenging, it's not easy. And the secret is for being more successful in everything that you do is to actually become aware the mindset that you're using or you're carrying at moment, all moments, key moments in time. And consciously choose the mindset that's aligned to your goal. We know that's not easy. We're constantly bombarded by conflicting demand, stresses, surprises, uh, negativity, and it's always hard to be conscious of just what belief system you're using to react to what's happening around you. And this is why Steve Jobs, he hired Bill Campbell. Anyone heard of Bill Campbell? I'm just curious. Anyone in the audience? No. Did you know that Bill Campbell is... Sorry? Was it from Pepsi he hired him from? Pepsi. Um, he was in quite a few places. Um, Pepsi wasn't, I 
can't recall if that's one of them, but Somebody yeah, he did coach more than just Steve Jobs. He coaches Larry Page, Eric Schmidt, Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey, amongst others. So basically all the A players in Silicon Valley. That's why they also call him the trillion dollar coach. Now, if you, if you ask anybody, does Steve Jobs know what he's doing? Of course he does. He's one of the most brilliant mind on the planet. But why does he need a coach? Because he, he needs someone to check him, to, to help him understand just exactly what mindset or what is, is it that he's using to make his decisions so that he's, he's putting his best version of himself forward. And this is not just a business thing, right? This is also a sports thing. Did you know that Michael Jordan has a mindset coach? You know who this is? Kobe O'Brien? Any B-A, uh, B-ball fans? They had, they've all got a mindset coach. And for them, that's George Mumford. Has anyone seen that Netflix uh, series called The Last Dance? Anyone seen that? It's fantastic. Yeah. So inspiring, so good. Can you tell us a little bit, like a summary of what that's about? Uh, I think it's about their final season. Yes. Uh, win final championship and their kind of journey there. And, yep. Um, so obviously focuses on Michael Jordan, but everything that kind of went on around the team, their challenges and um, I guess interactions, it was, no, it was absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. And the stakes are high, right? It was their, I think they're aiming for, the, for their fifth championship and the stakes are high. There's a lot of stress. So Phil Jackson, the head coach, understand the importance of mindset because Michael Jordan knows how to play basketball. (laughs) He's one of the greatest. But when the stress is on, when the pressure is on, when the stakes are high, when there's personal conflict, when there's tensions in relationship, can you bring it on? Are you having the same, having the mindset to bring it on to be successful? And that's where George Mumford comes in. And George Mumford didn't just coach the final season of Chicago Bulls in, uh, as outlined in the last dance, he also went on to coach other teams like Shaq O'Neal and the LA Lakers. So we know how important mindset is. And do you want to know what does these coach, superstar coaches do for these high-performing superstars? Let me share with you some of their coaching secrets. So the key to choose the right mindset to help you rather than hinder you is to become conscious of your reaction. So we have a reaction. So you have life setback. It happens. Beaten by a competitor, whatever that may be, you have setback. That could be your default reaction. This is so unfair. Why do they always do this? Why, why, why can't they do better? Why are they, you know, not discussing with me before they make these decisions? I hope that gives you some, you know, reminds you of the occasion when we think like that. What does the coach do? The coaches ask you good, powerful questions. Just what mindset are you using? What belief system are you using to come up with that reaction? And is this really helping you get to where you want to be, where you really want to be, not in the moment? Is this from a mindset from which I was abandoned? The thing is, if that reaction is not useful for you, what mindset would you choose? Oh, okay, we can choose a different belief system. I was chosen as special. Guess what? They're both true. They're two sides of the same coin. We're just making a constant switch. And what's the reaction of that? Maybe I'm becoming excited to learn. Maybe I'm looking to someone I was overlooked for promotion. Okay, I'm going to go to that guy that got promoted. What's your secret? Can you see that that switch, that constant switch in how your mindset can really create an entirely different set of reactions? So that's what the coaches do. And it doesn't apply just in business, even in family. So there's uh, my kids, Harmony and Caleb. Now, Caleb, I love, I love them both, but then for Caleb, I was trying to teach him what is one plus one. So that was the trigger. I spent 10 minutes. Caleb, one plus one equals to two. Repeat after me 10 times, one plus one equals to two. 
Okay, done. Caleb, what is one plus one plus one? Okay, Caleb, obviously you wasn't paying attention. Let me try this with you again. One plus one equals two. I was so patient, okay? I thought I was patient. After about another 10 minutes, Caleb, what is one point plus one? Mm, poo poo, poo poo. Like he was trying to play. He's, he think it's a, it's a whole joke. And that's when I lost it. Uh, so, Caleb, you obviously do not want to, to learn. You're not paying attention. Go to your naughty corner. I was really upset. I was angry. And I screamed at him. And I wasn't. The thing is, after that, he went off crying uh, and then, you know, into his naughty corner. And I had a thought, well, what mindset was I, was I using? I thought Caleb was lazy. That was how, I, that's the belief system, right? I thought he was just lazy. I asked myself, well, is that the, the mindset, the belief that I want to carry to be the dad I, I aspire to be? Is it? And the question, and the reality is, it's not. That's not helping me being the dad I want to be. What's a better mindset? I forgot what it is like not to know. I know one plus one equals to two for my entire life now. For decades, I just completely forgot what it is like not to know. Right? So for me, that created a different reaction now with that mindset. All of a sudden, I can connect with my son. He's struggling, he's trying, he just don't know. He needs encouragement. He needs connection. I apologize to him, made up to him, but now guess what? He does know what one plus one equals to two. Yeah? So this conscious choice of mindset has a dramatic impact on how we react to what's around us. And this is why now Stephen Colby is the author of Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. He summarized a quote from a particular psychologist, Viktor Frankl. Between stimulus response there's a space. In that space, there's our power to choose our response. In our response our lies our growth and our freedom. Now, Viktor Frankl is a Holocaust survivor. He learned and he observed people, what make people survive in that consequence. And he, he watched people be marched to a gas chamber all the time. He did notice two dramatic different reactions. There's one reaction where people were getting dragged crying along the floor, didn't want to die, howling, they basically screaming, pushed and squashed into that gas chamber. Then those people walked silently, quietly, head upright, with a sense of dignity into their death. The situation is the same, but the, the response they've chosen is completely different. So that is a choice. And that's something that no one, no one can take away from you. You have always a choice how you want to respond to your circumstance. It's just that, is your response helpful or not? So that is the space that Viktor Frankl always talk about. And your mindset awareness, being aware of what mindset you're carrying, what belief system you're using when you make that reaction, is going to help you expand that space to make a much more conscious choice and essentially to live who, the life that you believe you want to live, the best version of yourself. In summary, when you can control your mindset, you can control your response to circumstances, the threats, the opportunities, and therefore you can control your future. So, Learning to change your mindset is a journey. We, for those of you who are familiar with agile or innovation, we love to use the term fail fast, fail frequently, and learn from that. And the thing is, remember, failing is actually quite a trigger for people. It, 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 it's, people spend their entire life being taught failure is bad. It's not easy to change. And what particular belief system or mindset you carry at any one point 
has a number of factors that influence it. So I'll go through very quickly high-level factors that influences the mindset. Your identity. We saw that with Steve Jobs. What identity do you carry? Your level of energy. Did you have a good night's sleep? Or did you have a, a night of sleepless night? Right? That influences how you feel. It influences your mood, optimism or pessimism. Your stress level. Are you stressed? Are you relaxed? Are you on holiday? Influence the mindset you carry. Your posture. There was a scientific study to show that if you stand up upright, head upright with a power posture, you'll naturally think more optimistic. But then if you consciously, no matter how you feel, just collapse yourself a little bit like you're depressed. And the same situation, they notice that people naturally take a more pessimistic view. So your posture can literally control your mindset. Your environment. Are you surrounded by positive, happy people who wish you success? Or are you surrounded by naysayers? Right? What environment are you in? Your food. The food you eat. Are you eating food that's actually giving you energy? Or are you eating food that sucks energy? And even the bacteria that live in your gut. There was a, a lot of scientific paper that show that your gut can actually directly stimulate the nerve that can, that connects to your brain. So you can actually create stress. Your gut bacteria actually produces 80% of the serotonin that your body uses, which is known as the happy hormone or the happy neurotransmitter. So you can, all these factors influence your mindset. And that's why it's not that, it's going to be a journey, right? It's something that we have to practice and get good at. So I saw, was there a question in the chat? Uh, we can wait to the last uh, soon. Okay. I'm making a note of it. Great. Thank you, Shakti. So how do you make this useful? How do you make use of this information? Well, there's two type of challenges that you can use, apply this concept towards. They are planned mindset challenges. So if you have aspiration to be a better presenter, if you want to start a successful business, potentially you want to get a next promotion. So those are planned mindset challenges. Then there's unplanned mindset challenges. Unexpected failure, criticism. Someone cut you off in traffic and you feel like giving them the middle finger, right? There are unexpected personal attacks, criticisms, and those things are unplanned. But they're both mindset challenges. You can choose which one you want to tackle. I'll give you uh, some tips that can help you deal with both. The first one, tips to program your mind to win unplanned challenges. We call B PBNRR. So write this down, PBNRR, because these are tips that will help you. When you have unexpected failure, criticism, someone gave you a feedback um, that wasn't so nice, personal attack or arguments, what do you do? You feel like giving the middle finger and just say, I quit! <laughs> See you later. But then you remember you still got your bills to pay next day. So this is what you can do. Okay. First, stop. Pause. Don't react, not yet. Just pause for a moment. Breathe. Take a deep breath. Okay. Then think about what's the mindset that was getting triggered. He's just trying to piss me off. He cut me off in traffic. He's deliberate. That's the mindset. Is it true? Is it true? Maybe not. Because we can reflect and choose maybe a more helpful mindset. Because uh, if I think he's cutting me off and then I really feel like giving the middle finger and swear at him and maybe uh, get myself in trouble for road rage because I think he's deliberate, I can maybe, maybe he wasn't. Maybe he's in a rush to see a dying relative. Can you see how that just instantly changed your frame? Right? Think, because this is about what is going to help you or not, which mindset is going to help you, and then you respond. So it's this process, PBNRR, that you can practice whenever you get triggered by something that's unplanned. This requires practice, though. It's not something that you, you can't just do like that. You do need to go through a systematic process to get this kind of honed in as a skill, but it's a super useful skill for dealing with unplanned challenges. 
What about plan challenges? You've got aspiration to program your mindset to win. A plan challenge. Here are some tips for you. First, don't try to boil the ocean. Target which specific mindset you're working on, whether is this anxiety before a presentation, or maybe you have some uncertainty. Should I start up a side hustle, a second income? Or maybe it's about uh, asking that beautiful person out on a date. Yeah. <laughs> so choose something, right? They're all mindset related, they're all belief system related. And some mindsets are more helpful for tackling those challenges. Then think about, well, is there a cost for not doing anything at all? Because if there's no long-term cost, maybe it's not worth prioritizing your time and learning to get with it. Now, anxiety before a presentation, if you don't get good at presentation, the cost is maybe you won't get promoted because more senior managers, they are expected to present more, to speak more. Or it could be a business deal worth millions of dollars. You're making a pitch in front of venture capitalists and that is your time, that is it. So if you don't get good at small things, at presenting and anxiety, maybe that's a cost. So think about what is the long-term cost of no changing. And, and so that it gives you some incentive. That's when change, change becomes hard and difficult, that's when you need to kind of rely on that. That's a reason for change. And choose a practice, choose a mental programming, reprogramming practice to help you. And that could be as simple as a single deep breath. And I'm showing you some technique. Uh, or you can be as complex of doing some complicated neural feedback training with an EEG that measures your brain wave and tell you if you're thinking the right mindset or not. Okay, there are tools for that. If you're interested, um, I can share that more with you later. And think about how would you measure success? As simple as rating out of 10, right? It could be getting your friend to rate you. How did you perform out of 10? Tell them your goal. Get a, a friendly person to help you. But those four things, be specific. Think about something that's meaningful. Choose a particular practice to change the belief system in your mindset. And then get a feedback loop on how, so you know if you're successful. Let me show you how you can apply this to public speaking. So if my aim is to be more relaxed when presenting deeply personal issues. So what's the cost of not doing that in the long term? My anxiety, anxiety getting in the way to intimately and authentically connecting with my audience. So that maybe that's really what I want to do. So I'm going to choose a box breath before I start. So before I go into any key presentation, I'm going to practice the box breath. If you have never come across, just search, go to YouTube, search for box breath. They teach that to Navy SEALs, okay? The, the highest performance, they know those these things already. So if you don't know it, go and Google it, and that'll be your homework. Choose that, and then how am I gonna measure success? I'm gonna record my presentation. I'm gonna use the measure how much word fillers that I'm using, because if I get nervous, I use a lot of you know. You know what I'm talking about, you know. Um, you know, some some people don't know get they, they don't get their speeches together, so they don't use they use a lot. You, you know what I mean. Um, so you know what I mean, right? Some people use a lot of word fillers in the presentation when they, and that's how I measure. So that's a simple way for you to kind of take something that you strategically plan and you want to program your mind to be more successful. They're the four things that you can do. Now, if you fail. That's completely normal. Join the club, you're human, thank goodness. Join a community, find a community who also wanna work on the same thing. If you wanna work on speaking, if you wanna work on mindset change or time management, find a community, build a community. Get someone to help you be accountable. It could be a coach, a confidant, a best friend, your wife, your partner, someone who you can share your goals and aims with. And so they can keep you accountable and you can potentially follow a change system. Now there's structures for which we can use to, to make our change more manageable. And I'll give you some examples of um, community that have that system. So, oops. So here's some additional resources. There's change management framework knows Acura or Cottage, you can look into that. Community, so now if, some people have a drinking problem. 
alcoholic anonymous has 12 step of change, right? They have a step by step and they've got pre proven outcome, it works. So they have not just a community, but they have a process. The community is part of the process. You have Toastmasters, but if you want to learn how public speaking, accountability, it could be a coach, a life coach, mentoring, um, and mindset reprogramming practice. So searching inside yourself is a, a mindset program designed specifically for business leaders. It's, it, it gives you a ton of tools. So the tool I share with you in dealing with unplanned mindset challenges is actually from that search inside yourself program. It's got proven results, benefit a lot of people. You can look into that. For If you're interested in tech, technology, and you want mind hack, accelerate result, 40 years of Zen, it's very expensive. It's generally for the executives. It's I think it's 12 grand, but it works. For personal training, which is a, a form of meditation, mindfulness training. Um, if you're looking for a book, Auto Trait by Daniel Goldman and Richard uh, Davison. Now, Richard Davison is a professor of psychology in um, University of Wisconsin. And he did a collaboration to look at how your brain literally restructured when you when you practice some of these mental reprogramming uh, practices, so much so that you develop a new sense of normal. It becomes automatic. It just becomes how you react. So if I was anxious, I can reprogram myself to be permanently calm where it takes no effort. That becomes the default. And that book outlined a lot of the scientific, latest scientific research that supports that view. So that is something that I hope that you find useful. Now, the thing is, how many of you feels a little bit like this? Now, there's a ton of information, right? There's so much thing you could do. I just say, searching inside yourself. Uh, 40 years of Zen, uh, the book, Ultra Trait, there's a whole bunch of things. Sometimes, a little, where do I start? Where do I go? Now, you can start with those practices, but if you're, for some people, if you're interested in a more structured approach, where you want to get the beginner's guide, you know exactly where to go, you have a process, you have a community. I'm actually working on a course. I don't know if you're interested in it, and this is where I'm looking out to share this with you to see if this is something of interest to you all. It's very quick. It's something, the course is the distillation of everything I learned in the last 10 years, where I was able to go out of way to transform someone who hated presentation into what I was able to do for you today. I invested over $100,000 in this learning journey and I look to pack as many things that I think this is going to be really, really useful for leaders. And it's distillation over 10 years of coaching leaders on, on high performance. I put this into a single package and it's meant to be delivered in 14 days. It's a self-paced learning, online learning. And there's a few goals. The objective is, is to help you elevate focus and concentration in the world of uh, distractions, how you can stay calm under pressure, get your mind away from the weeds, how you can think strategically, magnify your influence to help you speak with confidence, authority, authenticity, discover tricks to solve difficult problems with ease, dealing with difficult people with skill. Okay, I hope I'm not the only one who had to deal with difficult people. Um, how to stop giving shoot what other people think and stop letting rejection handle rejections like a person. So there's, they're the goals of the course and it provides a sense of community. We're going to get together where you can get people to hold you accountable and also it's an experiential learning. So for that, what I mean is this is not a passive consumption of learning some theory and off you go and that's it you are expected to take a challenge and you are expected to try and overcome it using the tools that's presented in the, in the, in the framework. And that's what makes me excited because I really look forward to seeing a success story of what you did with it. And lastly, uh, it is a structured process. So it's not like random thing. It is a very structured step-by-step -step process that takes you from zero to someone who's actually becoming familiar of applying some of this mental reprogramming tool for specific contexts that I'll, I'll outline. So that's a link. It's a purely expression of interest. Now, if there's no interest, I'm not going to go and produce this. This is initial, very early stages. I've got some learning framework. I'm just 
putting this out there to see who is interested in knowing about something like this and when this product become available I'll let you know about it and you can check it out if you're interested so that's all I have presented today it's a lot to pack and I'm trying to give you plenty of time for us to chit chat and for you to ask questions so that's all for me I hope you enjoyed this yeah. presentation thanks a lot Stephen I